So today we have another mini PC from our friends over at Wowie. I'm a pretty big fan of the mini PC space, especially the budget mini PCs like the mini PCs from Wowie. I found out in my recent review that the Wowie mini PCs are more than serviceable for daily tasks such as internet browsing, sending emails, etc. So that was the Celeron N4020 mini PC. This time around we have the Athlon A9 9400 aka the AMD Excavator CPU. Just like the N4020, this is a two core processor, but it has higher boost and based clocks as opposed to the N4020 and this is because it has a active cooling solution. The N4020 just kind of has a metal heatsink and no fan which while it does make it silent you don't get much headroom for performance. So starting with the box, the box is a completely different color scheme and theme to the last mini PC that I looked at from Wowie. The other box is mostly white with some little bluish purple accent. This entire box is like a navy blue. White ink you know, it's kind of showing off the PC and it's very minimal. Not much information on the outside, aside from the fact that it contains the Athlon A9, aka AMD Excavator processor. Now, the big thing for this mini PC for me personally is it's only about $10 more than the last mini PC that I took a look at. And for that price point, not only did you get a slightly more powerful processor and a slightly more powerful video card built in so that you could play a few games and do some other tasks, you can change the RAM. It comes with a M.2 SSD that you can change out that has Windows preloaded on it. Also has an additional two and a half inch SATA enclosure so that you can add storage. The last mini PC that I took a look at from Rolly, while you could add internal storage, you couldn't do anything for the RAM or change the storage that was on board the device that was soldered on. So of course, you know, we're gonna have to tear it down and look at the insides. You know, you just get straight to the product. There's instructions, there's your mini PC, and off to the side is the power cable. The power cable looks pretty similar to the N4020 mini PC, probably a little higher wattage. Gonna pull the mini PC out here. There is a VESA bracket in the box if you wanna mount the mini PC to the back of your monitor. I'm not gonna be doing that today, so I'm just gonna leave it in the box. Now, one thing that I'm immediately cut my eye here. Uh, it's kind of funny. So the top can go on one of two ways. Whenever you take it apart, it clips on one of two ways. Well, out of the box, it appears to be upside down, at least to what the packaging and everything shows. This is no big deal because I'm going to upgrade it anyway and put it back. But it's kind of funny that, you know, it made it through like that. It's not like it'll hurt the device or anything. You know, it's just a cosmetic thing and you can put it back yourself. But on the front of the unit, a lot like the other mini PC from Wowie, the Celeron one, we have the power button, two USB 3.0 ports, a USB-C port, and this time around the headphone jack made its way to the front of the device. Now we have the headphone jack on the front, but the micro SD has been moved around to the side. All right, so this is a mini PC. It seems to be a little bit smaller than the slightly slower Celeron variant from Wowie. So it's slightly smaller. It has solid state storage and upgradable laptop RAM, as well as expandable storage and active cooling. And it appears to be smaller than the step down, you know, the slightly slower one. So it's a pretty compact package. So I can't wait to tear this thing open and test it out. So yeah, that's all that's in the box. Aside from, you know, going around the unit here and looking at the ports, unlike the Celeron mini PC, instead of a HDMI and a VGA, you get two HDMIs on this unit, which both support 4K at 30 hertz, I believe. And even though the Celeron mini PC has a little bit of venting on the side, on the back of the AMD Excavator one, you can obviously see that there's an exhaust vent on the back for the fan. And if you look through the bottom, you can kind of see the fan peeking through. So we're going to tear it apart and see what it looks like on the inside. All right, so getting it open wasn't that difficult. You just have to put a plastic pry tool in one of the corners and then work your way to a different corner. And then the whole top basically comes off. Taped right to the top, we have both the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. Uh, that's a brand I don't recognize. Uh, if any of you know about it, drop a comment. But that's the brand of the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas. And like I said, the lid was on backwards or upside down out of the box. So I'm going to fix that later. No big deal. Here's the main board for our excavator mini PC. So over on this side, we have our M.2 SSD. So this is 128 gig. I figure we'll have less than 100 gigs after it's formatted and Windows is also installed on it. And then coming down here, we have 8 gigabytes of DDR4. Not a brand that I recognize, but once again, if you recognize that, uh, drop a comment down below. I have a 16 gigabyte T-Force kit that I plan on throwing in here, but let's see what the cooling solution looks like. So no screws or anything at all. Once you get to this point with the top off, you're able to just pull the board out. All right, so the entire heat pipe is obviously copper. That's pretty typical of laptops and such, but the entire fin stack is copper as well instead of uh, like aluminum or anything like that. So it makes sense because of the size of the cooling solution relative to the board, but this is pretty hefty. It actually does weigh a good amount. And even though this isn't really a fast processor and it's a pretty old one as well, I'd like to see how this keeps the CPU and GPU cool. So yeah, you know, the teardown wasn't that bad, but uh, I got this RAM here. It's just some T-Force RAM. 
It's a 16 gigabyte uh, quote unquote gaming kit, you know. 8 gigabytes is just starting to be not enough for most things on Windows. So, you know, it's got the 16 gig kit just to give this computer its best chance. So, I have to do this one handed, but taking out the old RAM, all you have to do is push those metal clips to the side and then it pops right out. And then putting the new RAM in, you don't really have to worry about which slot to put it in if you have enough for all the slots. So, I have two sticks for the two slots, but you just slot it in at an angle in the slot that you took the other RAM out of and then just push down and those clips will hold it in. So, yeah, we got the RAM upgrade to 16 gigs. I'm not going to touch the storage right now now but I do have a 500 gigabyte uh, two and a half inch SSD that I'll probably throw in here. Alright so here we are in Windows and unlike the N4020 mini PC surprisingly this comes with Windows 10 not Windows 10 Professional or Windows 10 Pro. Now it is a fully activated copy of Windows so you can change your wallpaper, change your theming, do whatever you want but it is a bit weird that the slightly more expensive one didn't come with Windows 10 Pro. Not that you would have needed it on the other one, but just, just a little observation. Now I have this fully up to date on the latest version of Windows 10. One thing that I did notice is that in the setup, Cortana was shouting the entire time. So this is a older install of Windows, at least the setup was. Regardless, it's Windows 10, it's activated. I have it updated to the latest update. One thing I noticed was right whenever I turned on the PC for the very first time, there are tons of Windows updates running in the background automatically that I didn't put going. And this chugged the computer's performance tremendously because there were like five or six different things downloading that I never put downloading. So my advice is if you get a mini PC like this with a low power processor, as soon as you get it, just put on the Windows Update screen, let it get all the updates, and then once all the updates are installed, just go ahead and use it. So I tried a few games on the Celeron mini PC from Wowie, and of all the games that I tested, the only ones that I was able to get working properly were Minecraft and Portal 2. And Portal 2 actually ran better than Minecraft because it's less CPU intensive. Now of course both of those games would run this time around, slightly more powerful unit. But I was actually able to get Skyrim running pretty good on this one. It's a pretty old chip, you can't max out the graphics. So running Skyrim Special Edition, not the original Skyrim, it's easier to run. And we have it at 720p all low settings. And we're getting a little over 30 FPS, but there are some pretty nasty FPS drops. Now I wouldn't purchase this just to game on it. I'd purchase this more of just a power efficient mini PC that you can use for emails, documents, etc just so that you're not increasing your power bill with your, you know, giant gaming PC. Skyrim here actually looks pretty good, and the FPS drops do go away eventually, but they are pretty harsh and noticeable, but it is running at a little over 30 FPS, and the fans haven't even ramped up yet. But if we look at the temperature, it's actually relatively cool, for a laptop GPU at least. And of course we have Minecraft, this is Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Just have, you know, the chunks turned down, fancy graphics turned down. You can turn some of these graphics on, but I'm just turning them all the way down so it's as smooth as possible. This is awesome for office applications, but you can get away with a little bit of gaming. I would recommend probably one of Woe's Ryzen mini PCs for that one. Namely, their 5600U mini PC, you can get some pretty intensive games running on that one. I haven't gotten my hands on it yet, but I have tried a few 5600U laptops, and they are pretty powerful for gaming. And final game that we're going to look at here is Terraria. Even though Terraria looks pretty graphically simplistic, it actually is a little harder to run on lower power systems. The past Celeron mini PC that I looked at, I tried to run Terraria on it without any luck. Terraria would not run on that mini PC, but this is what it looks like this time around. So yeah, you know, I mean, I'd say it's pretty all right. Considering that this mini PC costs about what a copy of Windows cost, and you have upgradable RAM, storage, and it comes with the M.2 SSD with Windows on it, I mean, this is a pretty good value. I can also see this being pretty powerful for things such as home arcades, possibly where people would use Raspberry Pis and stuff in the past. A mini PC like this packs a pretty good punch to put in a little arcade like that. So now we just have like some day-to-day -day tasks. So, you know, open up internet. We're just gonna Google, you know, like YouTube. Go to this tab, we're gonna Google Woe's website. You know, just have a few tabs open. So because of the limited CPU bandwidth, stuff will obviously load a little slower. But it honestly is a powerhouse. You can have all these different things open and it'll never really chug. It loads relatively fast compared to office computers that I've used in the past. Let's just go to YouTube, pull up one of my own videos, put that going. One strange thing that I noticed about this mini PC is that it'll drop frames and act up on a YouTube video, right? But then if you full screen the YouTube video, you are pretty much fine. So I'm not too sure if that's a software bug with, or if it's something with YouTube not uh, interfacing with the mini PC, right? I don't know. 
I guess you could try the YouTube desktop app, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying the website. But here's some 1080p video playback. You know, it's doing pretty all right. I couldn't imagine it would be a good idea to have several videos going at once because you'd max up the processor pretty quick. But you can definitely have a video going while you're over here shopping or typing up an email. You know, really whatever you want to do. So in my past review, I said that I really, really liked the concept of Woei's budget mini PC, specifically speaking the Celeron N4020, but I wished I just had just a little more power, just a little more options, you know. So personally for me, I feel like this mini PC has hit that target. It's actively cooled, so it'll never thermal throttle on itself. And even though it's only a two core processor, it can boost pretty high to pretty much like three gigahertz. Considering the age of this laptop CPU, it's actually still pretty usable. For me personally, this is a perfect mini PC to leave hooked up to my monitor next to my main PC to upload YouTube videos, check emails, or just browse the web and go shopping, you know. With how power efficient these are, they're a great option to just keep on your disk. And the AMD A9 Excavator that's in here, even though it's a slower chip, it gives more than enough power to just do any daily task that you'd like on it. So I believe this mini PC is going for about 100 bucks right now. And if you want a mini PC, this is a great solution, especially with the dual HDMI. I can see that being very useful for a lot of people who want to run dual monitor setups. They claim that you can do 4K 30 on each HDMI port. So yeah, if you're looking for a mini PC, these will be ones, honestly not that bad. And if you have the extra money to spend, especially if you like upgradeability, I'd recommend the AMD A9 Excavator model over the N4020 model. For only about a $10 difference, you get noticeably more performance. A big thank you to Woei for sending out a review unit of this mini PC. As always, I have to buy the things that I make videos on, so anytime a brand reaches out to send a product to make a review on, it's still all my own thoughts and opinions. It just alleviates the burden of having to go out and purchase stuff. So, you know, huge thank you to brands such as Woei that provide products to review. So, you know, that's all for me. Peace.